that and your introduction and I'll okay meeting historic preservation commission is called to order will you uh, do the roll call certainly um, James Bisbee here Trip Yurt here Molly Bales here Dr. Ruth Cox here Jim Morrison here Gregory Rush here Tim Thompson here Candace Sullivan not yet and Mark Bartner yep okay we do have a quorum okay yep are there minutes to approve there are none there are none okay I have some words of introduction uh, first look welcome to new members appreciate you joining us and, and You'll be sitting in tonight and, and uh, observing. Okay. Historic Preservation Commission is a public commission. Wait, wait. Uh, Mr. Chair, could you yeah. please um, uh, you, uh, request if there are any adjustments to the agenda? Ah, okay. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? I do not know of any. Okay. Okay. We're good to go. Historic Preservation Commission is a public commission appointed by the City of New Bern's Board of Aldermen. It's responsible for preserving and safeguarding New Bern's locally designated historic districts, downtown and Riverside, based on the U.S. Department of Interior standards, uh, state statutes, city ordinances, and New Bern's historic guidelines. Two of the major tasks that the HBC does are approving applications for a certificate of appropriateness and preventing uh, uh, dem and preventing demolition of historic structures due to neglect. HPC holds a quasi-judicial hearing on an application for a certificate of appropriateness. The commission hears sworn testimony and evidence provided by the applicant, by parties who receive notice of the hearing, by others who can justify that they have relevant evidence and are directly affected by the application. The commission cannot consider comments based on personal likes, dislikes, hearsay, or personal opinion. Uh, that cannot directly be related to historic district guidelines. Likewise, the commissioner shall refrain from stating personal opinion, personal likes, dislikes, or, or hearsay during the hearing. The commission's decision is based solely on the testimony and evidence presented at the hearing directly relating to historic guidelines. Would you swear in our presenters? Certainly. Okay, while they're doing that, I'm going to briefly go over the process that we're going to be using tonight, as we do every meeting. The HPC administrator will provide an overview of the application. The applicant or their representative presents the application. Proponents and opponents who receive notice can present evidence. 
Rebuttal is allowed by the applicant and by proponents and opponents who receive notice. Others who can justify that they have relevant information will be and will be directly affected can present evidence. HPC administrator presents the staff and recommendations. The applicant has an opportunity to make any final comments. The commissioners discuss the evidence and may ask for clarification. And I'll call for a motion at that point and we'll have a discussion and, and a vote. Okay. Well, that's still continuing. Um, just to note that uh, in the past, when an uh, applicant hasn't shown up, uh, we um, uh, move them to later on the agenda. Okay. It is quite possible that uh, people show up at our office rather than here at City Hall. That's a common yeah. uh, mistake. Which, which one is not here? The first one. The first, the first one. one. Okay. Yeah, that should be. Okay. So we are all ready to go. Let's move on to 302 Broad Street. Okay. Oops. <clears throat> One second. All right, this is the uh, application. I'm going to make it larger. For 302 Broad Street, uh, the courthouse. Uh, they've provided the information on the form, and it is signed and dated by the authorized representative. Um, do we have the owner here as well? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, can you at least identify yourselves? Uh, come on forward, please, and speak into the microphone. Just identify who, your name and your <coughs> rank and serial number. No. <laughs> I'm Gene Hodges, Assistant County Manager with Craven County. Thank you. Zach Chenoweth, Assistant Facilities Director, Craven County. Thank you. Okay, so the application begins with photographs of the existing courthouse as we know it there, and then also a reference to the uh, modern addition that is to the uh, west of the original. Um, and then proceeding around to the east side where uh, the project is uh, uh, proposed. Uh, we can see also there's a round, in this case it looks like a tower, uh, the project is to the right of that. In this area right here, uh, between, well, it will be replacing the round tower and then uh, be adjacent to the square tower on the right. Essentially in front of this wall, uh, replacing the ramp in that area. There's some more angles of that. Also, in addition to that, to the right of that square tower is a ramp that goes down to the garage underneath. Um, a roof is proposed over this area. So here's an aerial view, uh, <coughs> current aerial view of the, of the uh, project area on the right-hand side of this photograph, and then a rendering of what the proposal will be. So you see there's kind of a T-shaped structure there instead of where that round tower was. Uh, and then it connects over to the square, um, I guess, uh, wing of the uh, modern addition. And then also the ramps and stairs out front uh, between the building and the sidewalk. And the, oh, sorry, and then the roof over the ramp to the, pit, to the uh, parking in the garage is around the back of this photograph, you can't see it here, around the back of the right hand side of the building. So here's a more uh, a normal personal person's eye view of the project. 
project. So the, uh, set the section of the building on the very right-hand side with the looks like black windows or actually openings, uh, that is existing and is to remain. Uh, and then so the new section is between that building and the old building on the left. And then here is that uh, enclosure for the ramp to the uh, basement uh, parking. Uh, in addition, there is one additional small feature here since we probably won't come back to this uh, uh, too much. Um, at the entrance of the driveway, the <coughs> ramp down, there will be a gate that will lift up, uh, rise out of the ground uh, as a flood gate. Uh, should flood waters get to that level. Okay, so um, here, this is now a plan, plan view. Um, that will make this, it shows overall the building, and I'll make this quite a bit larger to see a little bit more detail. <coughs> so, uh, you can see the addition is here in the darker orange or tan color. Uh, and it's essentially a new stairway on the left, a new lobby in the middle with a, a, a new elevator, and then a new room on the right-hand side. And then the uh, new roof over the existing ramp is shown here, and the flood barrier. And then the stairs and ramps are shown in the light-colored uh, tan. Uh, the red spot is some sidewalk repairs, and I believe they're also proposing to um, redo the um, actual sidewalk in that area. And they're adding a new ADA ramp uh, around the front corner of the, of the property. So let's see what else. Is uh, essentially the same thing, um, but it is the um, more of an architectural drawing uh, and larger. This is at the foundation level here, and then the first floor. Um, and there are interior renovations that will be happening as well, but that's not our concern. Our concern is the, only the exterior essentially the addition being uh, done here. And the stairs and the ramp. And then uh, the second floor. And we can come back to these if you ever need, need to reference or have any questions about that. Now I have to go smaller. Uh, this is the um, our internal zoning and inspections review form for this, and it provides all the zoning information, relevant zoning information, and there's a signature by our uh, zoning administrator, and his comment, it says that it does meet the requirements of the land use ordinance, and the setbacks must comply with city code section 15416. And the chief building inspector indicated that it will course require a building permit. And then uh, our recommendations are available when you're ready. Okay. Does the applicant or representative want to make any comments? Uh, any comments and okay. Are there any proponents or opponents? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Did you say you have some comments? No, I don't have any comments unless you have questions. Yeah. Oh, not yet. Okay. Not yet, All right. Are there uh, proponents or opponents to the project who would like to be recognized, who have status? Hearing none. Is there anyone else who has status who would like to comment on this? Okay, let's hear the recommendations. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so these are the recommendations for the um, applicant. Uh, Craven County and Oakley Collier Architects uh, for the project at 302 Broad Street. The uh, historic property name is Craven County Courthouse. Uh, 
initially built in 1883 and then remodeled 1915 and subsequent remodels. Uh, it is a contributing structure in the historic district. Uh, the National Register inventory description that's, uh, is that it is a second empire style brick, two and a half stories, Sloan and Balderson of Philadelphia architects, arched windows, four story entrance tower, and mansard slate roof. For the Sandbeck uh, description uh, from his uh, book in 1988, uh, I've pulled out of the two page uh, section on this uh, the relevant pieces. Uh, it is New Bern's largest and most lavishly ornamented Second Empire style building. When completed in 1883, the front was along Craven Street and dominated by a three and a half story square tower. The walls of the courthouse are of careful running bond brickwork decorated with horizontal bands of dark brick. Each bay is distinguished by slightly projecting pilasters. The large recessed panels between the pilasters are capped by tooth and corbelled brickwork. Molded and corbelled brickwork supports the overhanging bracketed cornice. The window and door openings are capped by exceptional East Lake style cast iron lintels. It was remodeled in 1958, resulting in the destruction of much original fabric. A large modern jail complex has been added to the north, marring the visual quality of the original construction and detailing of the Craven County Courthouse." Unquote. So this is for a project with 320 Broad Street to include an addition and modifications at the modern Craven Street addition for a new accessible entry and new spaces and covered driveway in the primary and secondary ABCs. So staff submits the following historic district guidelines are appropriate to this application. For development pattern 2.1.1, 2.1.2, and 2.1.3. For utilities 2.3.1, for signage 2.8.1, 2.8.2, 2.8.4. For design principles 3.1.1, 3.1.2, 3.1.3, 3.1.4, .1 .1, 3.1 .1 .1 .1 .1 and 3.1.5. For modifications, 3.2.2. For additions, 3.3.1, 3.3.2, 3.3.3. For foundations, 4.1.6. For roofs, 4.5.6. For accessibility and life safety, 4.7.3. For masonry, 5.1.2, 5.1.5. For metals, 5.3.3, 5.3.4. For paint, 5.4.2, 5.4.3, 5.4.4, and 5.4.6. Contemporary materials 5.5.2 and 5.5.3. The statements of reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are one, the project is located in the dense fabric development pattern. The proposal is an addition and modifications to an existing contributing structure. Three, the proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. Four, the zoning administrator and the chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. And five, the project is not, is not incongruous with the guidelines. So staff recommends the commission approve this application to include an addition and modifications of the modern Craven Street addition for a new accessible entry and new spaces and covered driveway in the primary and secondary ABCs. Thank you, sir. Are there questions and concerns from the commission? Just a note, you said 320 broad, and it's written as 320, but it's 302. Oh, did I say 320? Sorry. And, and a question about signage. Um, I didn't see anything about specific signage, but I assume that will come along later. Yeah, it is the second. And just something would go to the administrator. Okay. There was a sign on the rendering, so I assume there would be one. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, um, so when you respond, you'll have to come up to the microphone. Yes, please. Yes, there will be some signage on the building. Um, as shown in the rendering, there'll be a county seal and then the verbiage for the entrance. Uh, so everybody knows where they're coming to. Okay, first. It just would be good to give it to the administrator as you. you okay. Yeah, okay. So, David, before you get away, I, I think it's maybe important to recap a little bit of our discussion from design review about context. 
and how this aesthetic relates to the jail portion of the building. Kind of walk through the concept? Well, I, 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 that'd be fine. Um, and, and also, I, I, for the public, you know, obviously we've got a very historic building with a Correct. very modern addition. And for those unfamiliar with how we operate, there may be some uh, not understanding why your fenestration looks the way it does given the historic context. Okay. Um, I guess for the, the project is the challenge was to put in a new stair and elevator to make the building accessible. As, um, as Matt has said, the building is uh, multiple generations of structures. The uh, section of the structure we're working on is the 1980s, uh, originally built as an institutional, I guess the jail for the county. It is now currently the emergency operations center for the county, <coughs> along with some other uh, functions that are going in on the upper floors. Um, after the flood, it was uh, obvious that we had to get off the ground floor, which left us with a somewhat inaccessible building. So that led to the new addition with a, uh, a fairly lengthy ramp instead of stairs to get us up to um, what will be the new entrance to the uh, EOC and a new security checkpoint for the back side of the courthouse. Um, I don't know if anybody's been through the structure. It is, um, we're choosing to leave the original courthouse alone because it'd be just too challenging to try to address some of the issues there in that structure. So we're gonna do it on the 1980s structure which will give the county and the public access to all of their county buildings via this entrance elevator that gets us to the multi-floors which we have some challenges now so we're solving uh, quite a few ADA scenarios and remedies all with this one little addition. The style of it is trying to uh, not compete with the original courthouse at all, but to kind of improve the 1980s version of the structure that went there and to make it a very identifiable entrance to when the public approaches, they know exactly where they're trying to come and go on this building. As I said, downtown um, with all the historic structures, this. Uh, not intended to compete with the existing building, but enhance really the 1980s and improve that side of the structure down there. That covers all? Yeah, I think so. And, and, and the materials proposed for use? Very good. Uh, uh, the brick is to match the existing 1980s um, structure. Um, there's a variety of bricks on the old courthouse. We're going to choose to match that. And we're going to introduce a little more precast than that is there now because that is a um, has a little more traditional flavor to what we're trying to do. Uh, the glazing system will be a storefront system, also more of the flavor of the 1980s structure. And um, I think that's about it for matching materials. There will be a brief canopy, uh, small canopy right over the main entrance. We'll probably do something on the black steel and iron, which is also a material already on the original courthouse and something we can keep continuing in with the addition to try to blend it in. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. If you have any questions, <coughs> any other questions? Where Here. is uh, a ramp for somebody in a wheelchair? Is that over there to the right? Is that a ramp going uh, up there? To the yeah, the door? right side. Um, we're having to traverse about eight feet of grade. So that <coughs> right side of the stairs is about 80 linear feet of ramp that uh, you go back and forth to get up to the main entrance. We're staying with the brick and the railing system kind of to match the building. And uh, which was our challenge on the facility. We had very little land to work with, so we're trying to uh, get up to that level very steeply with very little land we have there. As you see, uh, the existing right side is the existing tower. They've already had uh, painted steel um, and those openings from the old uh, jail days. There's a bronze frame storefront glazing, which we will try to match. Which, uh, my rendering is showing clear, but it'll be really matching that existing now that I see it. Uh, we're showing a county seal. Its location uh, will possibly get moved to that upper precast uh, for a little more visibility and probably some signage right there at the ground level to help <coughs> uh, more wayfinding signage. So as you approach it from the parking lot, you know exactly where you're trying to go to for the facility. The dog okay, is for free. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Call for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move we find the application for a certificate of appropriateness for 302 Broad Street.
to be not incongruous with New Bern's Code of Ordinance, Section 15411 to 15429, and New Bern's Historic District Guidelines based on the following specific guidelines and findings of fact. Development pattern 2.1.12 and 3, utilities 2.3.1, signage 2.8.12 and 4, design principles 3.1.1234 and 5, modifications 3.2.2, additions 3.3.12 and 3, foundations 4.1.6. Roofs 4.5.6, accessibility 4.7.3, masonry 5.1.2, and 5.1.5, <coughs> excuse me, metals 5.3.3 and 4, paint 5.4.234 4 and 6, and contemporary materials 5.5.2 and 3. The statements of reason, findings of fact, or the project is located in the dense fabric development pattern. The proposal is an addition and modification to an existing contributing structure. The proposed design, components, and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. The zoning administrator and chief building inspector, excuse me, chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. And finally, the project is not in Congress with the guidelines. Is there a second for the motion? Second. Motion has been Made and seconded. All in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none is approved. Entertain a motion for issuance of COA. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. We issue a COA. All in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? None. You have it. Thank you all Thank for you. your time. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, those six North Pasteur. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for Street, right. So this is the application for 1206 North Pasteur Street. Um, and you can see that they've provided uh, the information on attached documents. And otherwise notated on the second page and signed and dated. That is the owner. And these are some of those attached documents that you uh, may have reviewed. I will not be reviewing them verbatim. Um, in this case, it references the front door. The back door is not part of this application. Uh, <coughs> was removed after the uh, design review meeting uh, to become a minor work. Uh, so this is the front door uh, in question. Uh, oh, and uh, the attached documents also reference the, dr the driveway, which will come up later. Uh, so this is the front door in question. Uh, I will read this in our previous meeting uh, two weeks ago. We were asked why we thought this front door was an interior door the previous pictures are now, I have them located. Uh, the following pictures we have provided are all interior doors that are the same style as our front door pictured here. Our front door measures an inch and three eighths <coughs> versus an exterior door that typically measures an inch and three quarters. <coughs> so I'm gonna have to go. Mm -hmm. This is the first, uh, <coughs> the first of the uh, doors that they present. Um, and let's go back a second to this one. Um, noting it has the uh, three panels at the bottom and the, and the single pane towards the top. There is another panel above the window. And this window also has uh, two small sills at the bottom and the top. <coughs> Here we have, again, three panels and a single window. Another one with single, uh, three panels and a single window. Another one, three panels with a single window, and this one has a transom. Another one, same, three panels and a window with a transom. Uh, now I'll make these larger. These are photos from the actual door. 
showing uh, many of the uh, bad conditions, I guess you might say, of the door. <coughs> and then uh, pointed out uh, with the uh, arrows. dimensions on this door to show um, different dimensions on different parts of the door, uh, condition at the lower right of the door. separation of parts. So here their explanation or their um, narrative. The reasoning for us to uh, not try and repair our front door is that it needs to be completely disassembled and put back together as pointed out in one of the pictures above. The door is not square even if it was completely rebuilt. Someone has cut the top and bottom to fit these side lights in the past and or what other application it was in. Inside is 82 and 5 eighths. Handle side is 82 and 3 quarters. The top measures 36 inches and the bottom measures 36 and a quarter. This door has screws on the back side holding the panels together and a weather strip at the bottom to keep the door from coming apart. I think the uh, photo, uh, one of the earlier photos where it was pointing at a bunch of dots must be uh, where the screws are. In our previous meeting, one of the council members suggested closing in the side lights and try to reuse the front door. <clears throat> Under great consideration, we prefer not to do this suggestion due to having to move the electrical for the front stoop light and all the siding work that will have to be done that will make this look presentable from the street. The door will have to be completely disassembled and will have to be built back without major damage. This will take several weeks for a custom craftsman to complete. This provides a security issue to our home, not having access to our home for several weeks due to this being the only access to Unit A. Being a steward of this historic home, historical home, we would not like to change the street profile for the community and or passers by, passer, passer buyers. Our proposal is to replace side lights and door with the door unit we provided. This will ensure we can install it in one day and this will keep our property safe and secure. Our goal is to preserve the history of our home, but in doing so, we want to make it as energy efficient and safe as possible. The Tyndall family has been in the New Bern area for over 100 years. Our mission is to preserve this house for many generations to enjoy, we rooted into this community. My grandfather retired from the uh, May Mayola plant, head of chocolate milk and ice cream. My uncle closed down Craven Foundry, working there for over 15 years. My dad worked at the ice plant in his teenage years in the 60s. If you are from this area, you know that all these locations are two blocks from North Pastor Street. Our goal is to keep the Edward Legalis home functional for many years to come. We're doing extensive foundation work, which is most important, and trying to make it once again energy efficient as possible. Thank you for your time and careful review. So there are more photographs. Um, see some light coming through. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is uh, the side lights, not the door itself. Uh, so we have cracks and tape uh, for the side lights. And this is the proposed door. I have to make this full size. This is the proposed door and side lights. Um, oops. It is um, a uh, wood construction, or at least uh, it says it's light oak, jam finish. Uh, the door finish is light oak. Uh, and then they provided some uh, end, a view of the end of the, um, the framing, and then uh, the top of the door. Uh, that was the back door, and then 
this is the, uh, the driveway uh, proposal. Uh, <clears throat> they would currently like to uh, put gravel in this area here outlined in white. in this location uh, and the length of the driveway to the sidewalk is 41 feet, uh, 20 feet wide at the top, 18 feet to the property line to the next door neighbor, 65 feet to the back fence and the driveway material will be 57 stone. The driveway will be bordered with brick. There is no sidewalk to the back door. We are keeping the original platform, just adding parking space, and not removing any trees, and the driveway will not be attached or touching the home. There is a five-foot buffer. Uh, they have several, this uh, layout in, from several angles. If we want to discuss any of those. Also, if you have any questions about the dimensions, they're painted right on the ground. This was one of the other attachments regarding uh, for the application for this particular part of the project. Um, and this is the sketch that they provided um, last time, uh, which uh, is still the same, I believe, design as it was before, or same design as it is now. Uh, we have our zoning and inspections uh, review. And so from the zoning administrator, it meets the requirements of the land use ordinance. And for the building inspector, the uh, front door and the driveway will not require a building permit. And then otherwise, we're ready with our recommendations. Okay. Would the applicant like to add anything to the presentation? <coughs> uh, just the, the size. Can you oh, come up to cut? Just uh, the original uh, sketch, we actually scaled down the driveway a little bit. Uh, originally, we were going to have it go to the house, but it, we just kept the original um, driveway. Okay. Okay. Are there proponents or opponents uh, for the project in the audience who would like to be recognized to have status? Seeing none. Uh, anybody else who has, thinks they have re relevant information? Hearing none. Would you present your recommendation? Certainly. Okay, make this again a little bit larger. No, that will not work. Okay. Uh, this is a project for Jeremy and Kelly Tyndall at 1206 <coughs> Pastor Street. The historic property name and date is the Edward Legallee House. Uh, built circa 1908. It is a contributing structure in the historic district. Uh, the National Register Inventory description for this uh, from 2003 is uh, Edward Legallee is listed at this location in 1910 as the foreman of a dry kiln. The two-story nearly square main block is topped by a pyramidal asphalt roof and there is a small hip roof, one-story wing on the northwest elevation. The one-story porch, which spanned the three-bay facade and continued along the southeast elevation, has been completely enclosed, while the small porch on the wing has been removed. Windows are two over two sash, and a corbelled chimney is located on the rear roof slope. Uh, and Sandbeck had no description of the house. So this is regarding 1206 North Pastor Street to include a front door and side lights replacement and expand the gravel parking area all in the primary, secondary, and tertiary ABCs. Staff submits the following historic district guidelines are appropriate to this application. For parking, 2.7.1, 2, 3, and 4. For design principles, 3.1, 2, and 4. For modifications, 3.2.1, 2, 3, and 4. Entrances 4.4.1 and 2. So statements of reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are, one, the project is located in the tight weave development pattern. Two, the proposal is modifications to an existing contributing structure plus a driveway. Three, due to failure to meet the requirements of guidelines 3.2.2, 3.2.3, and 3.2.4, the proposed design components and materials of the front door do not meet the requirements of the guidelines. 
The proposed design components and materials of the driveway portion of the application do meet the requirements of the guidelines. Four, the zoning administrator and chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. And five, the front door portion of the application is incongruous with the guidelines and the driveway portion of the application is not incongruous with the guidelines. So staff recommends the commission approve this application for the proposed driveway in the primary and secondary ABCs and to deny or leave out the portion regarding the front door and side lights replacement in the primary ABC. Okay. Questions or comments from the commission? Well, just to, uh, again, recap some of our design review discussion, <clears throat> I didn't see any reference to the windows that we talked about, so I'm asking you to confirm that we're going to repair those at this point. Yeah, but I've already spoke with them, and we're going to uh, get those back to where I'm going to have to make some. <laughs> but okay. I'll make them the way they were. All right. Well, we appreciate that, and that's the right thing to do. Um, <clears throat> So then I, I guess the, the next question I, I have, or, or, or maybe comment, um, we, we had a lot of discussion about the front door. I thank you for providing the additional information uh, since design review. Um, I, I see you still want to continue with the replacement with the oak finished door, and, and I'm going to call it a production door for, for lack of a better term. I'm a little concerned that doesn't, um, it's not compatible with fenestration of the house and its age. Um, and, and so to, to help us maybe have that conversation a little further, and I don't know if other commissioners feel the same or um, have other comments, I'm on page 6-1 under preservation in the guidelines. And just paraphrasing, um, <clears throat> preserve and retain historic material, retain doors, windows, and balustrades. Um, if you preference uh, should be given to repairing historic material versus replacing historic material, and, and so you made an argument that the door is not repairable. That's why you want to replace it with the production door. And, and then lastly, if you do have to replace something, um, the guidelines, the narrative goes on to say custom fabricate replicas and reconstructions with the spacing, proportion, dimension, cross section, and profile of, of the, the template or the original. And so I guess that last sentence, I, I think that's kind of where we are, you know, based on where we left our conversation at design review, which um, ties back together my opening comment where I'm, I'm not sure that fenestration of the door, I, it, it's too different from what was there before where it, it's not compatible in my opinion um, you know, with the fenestration of the remainder of the house. And, and so uh, I just share that for conversation. And, um, perhaps there's some other comments up here other than, than me. Okay. Are there other comments? Well, the, uh, if, if you look at uh, the historic structures in Riverside of that time period, uh, early 1900s, which is where most of the houses on Avenue A and then coming up a little bit on North Pasture, uh, there, are no, there are no doors even similar to that. There are a lot of original doors left on Avenue A. Uh, the oak finish, most of the doors are are painted or stained dark color. So the, the proposed replacement door doesn't, um, doesn't really match any of the historic contributing structures uh, in the surrounding area. And if you look at the uh, historic district as a whole, there really aren't any doors on like, like that on the contributing structures. Any other thoughts? Well, restoring a door is not something unusual for the restoration of a historic home. That's my only comment. That it, yeah. Yes, it, it does require a craftsman, but uh, it's not something inconsistent with what we've asked for in the past. 
Mr. Tindall, I, I think at this point, you, you see there's some uh, concern about the, the project in its, in, in, that piece of the project. Uh, I think an alternative would be to withdraw that particular piece and go ahead with the driveway and then come back to a subsequent design review with another approach. Okay, so side lights are okay, even though they don't match the, that time period. And then if the door was painted and it wasn't an oak finish, then it would be okay. Well, yeah, I'm, or, I, or don't, I don't think so. The style. I, yeah, I, I think we've got some I think there's a longer discussion to see what the style yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So, so uh, if, if I may, I, I think the choice that you have is to either, from my point of view, the choice that you have is to repair the existing door or demonstrate that it is not repairable. And then if that's the case, I'm, you know, I'm not hung up on the historic material as much as if you do have to replace it, I'm okay with that. Um, and it's demonstrated that it needs to be replaced, but it needs to replicate the door that was there, yeah. at least more closely than we have shown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, I just say yeah, that you could. It is, and that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and again, I, I don't want to be an obstacle. Yeah. You know, we we as a board want you to be successful. Yeah. Correct. I'm but, trying to make the neighborhood look good. And, right. and, and we, yeah. we appreciate that, but you're in a primary area of visual concern. We've got the historic door, um, and, and uh, well, those are the paths forward as, as I see it. Um, also, a door reflects a lot the people that have lived in the house. Mm -hmm. so. Those pictures I showed you before was an office building. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like, I get it. Do, do you wish to go, if the choice I'll offer to you again is, is to remove the door from the project and just deal with the driveway and come back. If we, if we vote and reject the whole thing, it doesn't come back for a significant period. Right. Um, yeah, that's what we'll do. Okay. Yeah, we'll just so the, the door would... You, so you, Mr. Chair, just so the record is clear, I think the applicant is saying that he is removing, he's modifying his existing application to remove any reference or consideration to the front door. Hmm. Right. Is that correct, sir? Uh, yes. So that. So if I, oops, sorry. Mm -hmm. So I guess by removing it, so next month if I come up with something <laughs> different, then I'm able to. Come to the design review yeah. and, okay. Okay. And, and we'll yeah. deal with it. In, in fact, I even go further and, and talk with Matt Shelley it's so that we can go ahead and put some plan in action. For instance, yeah. if it involves um, the board going to verify the condition of the door, we would want to do that before the next meeting so yeah. that we could yeah. talk intelligently about yeah. what was observed. Okay, perfect. We'll do everything we can to facilitate getting to an end point okay. by the next time. Yeah, my, my, just my major, major concern is safety. I understand. Because I, you know, I got my kids and stuff would come down and work on the house yeah. and, yeah. you know, people coming in. So that's my yeah. major, major concern. Okay. Are there any questions about the driveway? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. I would entertain a motion then dealing with the driveway piece of this project. But we have, and it has to remove the door from there. The door has been removed mm -hmm. from the application. Yes, from the application. But in the motion, doesn't it have to say that? No, ma'am. Um, since the application has been modified to remove um, any mention of the door, the application as it sits today modified does not consider the door at all. Doesn't have to. Okay. Yeah. okay. And I would just suggest that you uh, do not need to reference the uh, sections of the guidelines that are not related to the driveway. Not related to the, to the driveway. Remove the ones. Right. Cite the ones that are that are related to the driveway. Correct. Okay. Uh, only, yes. Yeah. Okay, would someone like to do that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move we find the application for a certificate of appropriateness for 1206 North Pasteur to be not incongruous with New Bern's Code of Ordinance Section 15411 to 15429 and New Bern's Historic District Guidelines based on the following specific guidelines and findings of fact. 
parking, 2.7.123 and 4. Statement of reason. Project is located in the tight weave development pattern. The proposal is a driveway. Mm -hmm. The zoning administrator and chief building official reviewed this project and commented accordingly. That's it. Uh, you could add that the uh, the last half of that sentence. Oh, and the driveway portion is not in Congress with the guidelines. Thank you. No. Thank you. Is there a second for that motion? Second. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. We approve the motion for the driveway change. All in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. You understand where, where we're at now? Yep. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, you'll need a motion to oh. issue the COA. Motion to issue a COA for the driveway. So moved. So moved. Second. Seconded. Second. All in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Driveway is right. Okay. Uh, Fifteen twelve and sixteen National Avenue and four oh seven North Avenue. Okay. <clears throat> For this application we have uh, the applicants have filled out uh, all the information on the form, <coughs> and they have signed and dated, and uh, the applicants are here and uh, sworn in. Uh, this is uh, some two pair of photographs to show you the area uh, that we're talking about, uh, and I'll show you the uh, the lots, that, the parcels that we're talking about uh, in a minute, but it's essentially this grassy area here. Um, this is a, actually a vacant lot between the house in the background and the sidewalk. And there's also a vacant lot all the way on the left. You'll see here at the lower one here. So uh, the lower one shows along the, uh, to the right of the chain link fence is uh, another vacant lot. So the fences will be uh, on those two lots. Um, keep this small. So um, the applicants own three lots, shown in blue, uh, and we were just standing at the top of this photograph along this street, uh, looking at the two vacant lots, uh, the one in the, on the left, 1516 National Avenue and the other one on the right uh, at the top right uh, called 407 North Avenue. Uh, a little bit difficult to see is the uh, what he calls the gold line that is close to the top edge of the two lots along uh, North Avenue. And then also on the left hand side you can see going through the shadow of this tree uh, the second section of that fence. Uh, that is proposed to be a four foot high fence. It's proposed to be a what? Four foot high fence. <coughs> four foot, okay. All right. Then uh, the next one shows a second fence uh, behind that four foot fence that will be six foot high. And it's shown here in a more black, white colored line. Uh, it is set back another 19 feet or so from the first fence. And also, uh, if you remember, the other fence passed through the shadow on the left. Uh, this one is uh, quite a bit farther back, uh, on, in this case, at, um, from that other fence. But this one will be six feet high. Um, and also, for reference for anyone who has been out to the site, there are currently some very long posts that are in the ground uh, those will be cut down, and those represent the line of the first fence I mentioned up here. So those uh, very long posts uh, are along that line of that gold, the gold line shown here on this drawing. Okay. Uh, so uh, there are some descriptions of the project here, um, and. Uh, there is a modification, but essentially it will go ahead down to the photographs. Um, the six foot high fence is proposed to be what's 
called this board on board uh, mission style, uh, uh, they describe it as, which uh, is uh, board, solid boards that overlap each other instead of butting up against each other. And so they alternate front, back, front, back, uh, along, and so there's uh, two, two photographs to show that. Um, then in su subsequent to our meeting, uh, the design review meeting, uh, they've understood that the front fence needs to be four feet tall and one inch gaps between the, uh, the six inch wide boards. Um, and so then, uh, so that was the revision that they made since our last meeting. Everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, and so our zoning and inspections review uh, for the zoning administrator, it meets the requirements of the land use ordinance and for the chief building inspector will not require a building permit. And then we're ready with our recommendations. Would the applicant like to make any comments? Gregory and Lynn Chamberlain, my wife. No, I don't need to make any comments. No comments? Okay. Sure. Okay, are there any proponents or opponents to this project who have status who would like to comment? Seeing none. Any others who would like to comment? Seeing none. We're ready for findings and recommendations. Okay. So. So this is uh, for the for Gregory and Lynn Chamberlain, and the project is at 512, 56, uh, I'm sorry, 1512, 1516 National Avenue and 407 North Avenue. Uh, historic property name uh, and date is for 1512 National Avenue, which was actually the house, uh, obviously not the vacant lots, but the house itself is the Sutton House and was built circa 1922. The other lots are vacant. Uh, the one lot is a contributing structure, but there was, uh, for the two vacant lots, uh, national inventory is not applicable, and sandbag description obviously none. So for 1206 North Pastor Street, uh, the project is to include fencing in the primary and secondary ABCs. <coughs> Staff submits the following historic district guidelines are appropriate to this application. For fences and garden walls, 2.5.1, 2, and 3. For paint, 5.4.3 and 4. Staff recommends the commission approve this. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, there are findings. <coughs> Can I borrow some? Findings of fact. I had to uh, reissue the recommendations to add the statements of reason. Uh, based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are. One, the project is located in the tight weave development pattern. Two, the proposal is the installation of two fences. Three, the proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. Four, the zoning administrator and the chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. And five, the application is not incongruous with the guidelines. So staff recommends the commission approve this application to include fencing in the primary and secondary ABCs. Board comments or? No, Mr. Questions? Shelley, you did pick up 1206 Pasteur again in your introduction. What? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so noted and corrected. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Other comments or questions? It's a tall fence securing a private area within another fence. And Mr. Chair, just, just to make sure um, you all have that competent evidence in your record. So if you all are satisfied that the fence that is to be approved is demonstrated in the record and the documents before you tonight, then you certainly can move forward. Okay. I, I think she's referring to the four foot one, which was, we didn't see a, a photo of that or a sketch. The, the one that's on the perimeter. 
four foot one. Yeah. Correct. Okay. We just have this one line uh, description. Okay. Did it Everybody really understand one that? Inch separation. That's that was the change. Right. Yeah. And what's that fence going to be made out of? It's uh, wood. Yes, wood boards. Mm -hmm. And is there a gate in it? I didn't hear anything about a gate. Is I there don't a know. gate? Uh, Uh, yes, ma'am. There are there are gates in both the fences, and uh, the four foot fence is basically six inch pickets with an inch gap. Pretty standard. Okay, so I, I, I'd like to see pictures of that. I'd like to see how that's all set yeah. up and what the gates look like. And well, the gates will be part of the wall. There won't be any difference in the gate. The okay. gate will be. I understand, but I'd like to see pictures of it. Do you have, do you have pictures? Um, I can put together pictures, but I Don't described it in the addendum what yeah. it was going to be, so I figured that was appropriate for how we've been doing it in mm -hmm. the other part of the description. Well, so, you only show part of one one of the fences you're going to put up with that are going to be one on top of the other. Right. When but, we discussed this at the previous meeting, we discussed what the rules were for okay. the for the. Uh, Preservation Society. Right. So following those rules right. is basically picket, gap, picket, gap. I mean. So if you could provide us a picture of that in the gates and how that's all going to work. Um, we could make that a, a condition, condition of the approval if yeah. you'd like. Yes, if you could, would okay. you would please. And if he could come and okay. present that to you before he started work on it. Okay. Right. We'll make that a condition of a uh, motion. That someone, are there any other questions before Wait, we get to that motion? Yeah, can you scroll back down to the pictures? <clears throat> and so I, I guess along those lines, um, what does the top of the picket look like? It's basically you boxed got, off, sir. In it's going to be style. Yes, just, sir. just square. Yes, yes, sir. Or rectangular. Yes, sir. Okay. Just basically, you're just not going to have the gap in between yep. the sports. I mean, it's just, I'm not putting one board in. Yeah. There's no yeah. top board, so yeah. that's your gap. Okay, thank you. Okay. Other questions? Would someone make a motion with that condition that we've discussed? Mr. Chairman, uh, I move that we find the application for 512 and 516 National Avenue and 407 North Avenue to be not incongruous with Newman's Code of Ordinance sections 15-411 to 15-429 and Newman's Historic District Guidelines based on the following specific guidelines and findings of fact. Guidelines, fences and garden laws, 2.5.1, 2.5.2, 2.5.3, 2.5.4, 2.5.5, 2.5.6, 2.5.7, 2.5.8, 5.4.4. Findings of fact, the project is located in a tight weed development part, uh, pattern. The proposal is the installation of two fences of appropriate design, components, and materials that meet the requirements of the guidelines. The zoning administrator and chief building uh, official have reviewed the project and commented accordingly and that the application is not incongruous with the guidelines. Uh, I'd like to also attach the following condition. The administrator will work with the applicant to assure that the four foot fence meets the description as provided by the applicant along with any necessary documentation required for that. Can, can I suggest modifying that condition uh, such that it is the applicant who is required to do something as opposed to the staff being required to do something? Um, yes, that was that was my intent, is the applicant would provide that information okay. to you. Yeah. Second. Okay, it's moved and seconded that we uh, approve this um, uh, Petition with the uh, uh, proviso that uh, Tim mentioned. Uh, Mr. Chair, 
Can we have either the chair or one of the members repeat the condition just so that everybody understands what it is? Tim, would you? Okay. <laughs> the administrator uh, will work with the applicant to assure no, that the, the, the applicant will provide to the administrator. Uh, okay. The applicant will provide to the administrator uh, uh, necessary um, description and evidence to assure that the four foot fence meets the description that we've discussed. And the standards. And the standards, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor state aye. 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 Opposed. Done deal. And you understand your responsibility at this point. I will supply pictures of the four foot high section, six foot section, yep. with the gap on the front and back, yep. with the top cap. Yep. Um, the gates are going to just be metal, so I will add that. I believe I have it already in the mm -hmm. description of, of the uh, pieces I'm using, mm -hmm. but the metal is just standard yep. fence. There's not going to be a different pattern in the fence right. from what the actual wall is. Okay. Thank you. And a motion to issue, sir? Motion to issue the COA with that uh, appended. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. We approve this COA as amended. Um, all in favor, state aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. We done. Okay. Can I ask who uh, did the second on the first motion? Jim? Okay, we're Thank you. At, Thank you so much. Thank you. We're at 305 Burn. All right. Here we have the application for this one. Um, I believe the applicant will need to be sworn in. Um, Okay, so here's the application for 305 Burn Street. Uh, again, uh, the information has been provided on the form, and the form is uh, duly signed and dated by the <coughs> owner of the property. So, uh, some background photos. This is uh, what you get on uh, Street View, um, the front of the house. Uh, obviously, the application is um, concerning the backyard. But uh, just for style and um, context, uh, again, on the left side of the front of the house, and then the right side of the front of the house, complete with uh, mail carrier. Right. Uh, and then uh, the driveway is on the right-hand side for this house, or is shown here on the right-hand side of the house. Um, here is an aerial view with the site selected. And the upper right-hand corner is the subject area for this uh, shed project. Um, to, uh, to note, it was a little confusing to me. There were, there's actually a driveway behind the fence here uh, for this relatively large property behind there. Uh, and um, let's see. Uh, I guess that's enough for now. Uh, this is the sketch that they provide that Mr. Ulrey provided for his project. You can see the shed is labeled E in the upper right hand corner. Um, it shows the property lines, the distances to the properties, uh, three feet, this is the required setback. The project is 10 by 12. Um, it shows the door in the lower right hand corner of the shed and the window on the left hand side of the bottom side of this rectangle here. Uh, <coughs> And 
then he shows the house here is at least, is way more than eight feet away. So this is the subject area right here, currently covered with gravel and surrounded by fencing. And the view from the, that would be the view from the shed to the house, or from the right hand side of the shed to the house. Uh, and then uh, from the side fence across the area where the shed will be towards the rest of the lawn. Uh, this is an image which represents uh, a shed very similar to what he's proposing, um, and it's in a nearby yard somewhere. Uh, and he's also provided uh, some of the uh, spec or, or uh, cut sheets for the project. You can see it does have the gable roof on it and a uh, uh, door and window here on the side, of <coughs> double 36 inch wide door. a metal roof and um, the siding is LP smart side panel siding shown here on the left the, um, uh, let's see the door is uh, LP sided door as well here's a, another sketch however this has the door shown on the wrong side, uh, it, but it does show the materials, uh, more specifically uh, the smart side siding uh, and the tummy roof. Oh, and, uh, sorry, the flooring, we don't care about that. Um, and the notched skids, uh, which will be the foundation. Uh, the window is uh, aluminum slider windows with metal. I believe you're not doing the shutter though. Right. So. So here's uh, his summary of the uh, description of the project. Um, in addition to being the, sh the 10 by 12 shed, panel lock, metal roofing, uh, smart panel siding. Uh, this um, 18 by 27 window, you will have a flower box attached and a, a rectangle vent under the roof arch. Uh, skids uh, are uh, made of wood, uh, pressure treated wood and let's see, uh, oh the double door is like fiberglass, sorry, and with the standard. So here's our zoning and inspections review. Um, it meets the requirements of the land use ordinance and it will not require a building permit. Okay. So, and we're ready with our recommendations. Sir, you're not required to, but would you like to add anything to that? Um, it will, sorry, uh, it's, been, it's been rest on blocks and just not on, on the, the skids will be on blocks and they'll be anchored. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any proponents or opponents to the project? None. Uh, others who have relevant information? Very none. Ready for recommendations and findings. Okay. One second. I have to catch up to you. <laughs> <laughs> So this is uh, recommendations, Mr. Mark Ulrey's project at 305 Burn Street. Uh, the historic property name is House, <coughs> and it was built in 1910. It is a contributing structure. The National Register inventory description is uh, the house is uh, two stories, three bays wide, two bays deep, three over one sash, hipped roof, hip roof porch, tapered post, brick piers, and one story rear wing. The sandbag description that might have any relevance to this is uh, the low hipped roof and relatively plain exterior finishes. So for 305 Burnt Street, got that right this time, uh, the project uh, is to include a new shed in the tertiary ABC. Staff submits 
following historic district guidelines is appropriate to this application for accessory structures 2.6.1 and 3, for design principles uh, 3.1.1 and 2, for foundations 4.1.3, for walls, trim, and ornamentation 4.2.4 and 5, for windows, doors, and openings 4.3.2 and 3, for paint 5.4.2, 3, and 4, for contemporary materials 5.4.1. 5.1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. And so statements of reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are, one, the structure is a contributing resource in the tight weave development pattern. Two, the project is an accessory structure within the tertiary ABC. Three, the proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. Four, the zoning administrator and chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. And five, the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So staff recommends the commission approve this application to include a new shed in the tertiary ABC. Okay. Questions? Comments from the board? Pretty okay. Uh, we can entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move we find the application for a certificate of appropriateness for 305 Bone Street, have a look, uh, to be not in Congress with New Bern's Code of Ordinance sections 15411 to 15429 and New Bern's Historic District guidelines based on the following specific guidelines and following findings of fact. Design principles, excuse me, accessory Just structures, yeah. 2.6.1 and 3. Design principles 3.1.1 and 2, foundations 4.1.3, walls, trim, and ornamentation 4.2.4 and 5, windows, doors, and openings 4.3.2 and 3, paint 5.4.2, 5.4.3 and 4, contemporary materials 5.5.1234, excuse me, 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. As statements of reason, findings of fact, the structure is a contributing resource in the tight weed development pattern. The primary structure is a contributing resource. The project is an accessory structure within the tertiary ABC. The proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. The zoning administrator and chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. And the project is not in Congress with the guidelines. I hear a second. Second. Moved and seconded. We approve the project. Discussion? Any? All in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Project's approved. Motion to approve the COA. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. We approve the COA. All in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. It's approved. Thank you, sir. Okay, 720 East Front. Okay, so this is the application for 720 East Front Street. Uh, and you can see the documents filled out appropriately. Signed and dated by the owner's authorized representative who is with this form authorized. <coughs> And that too is uh, notarized and dated. So this is um, the site uh, along East Front Street. It's currently a vacant lot. Uh, and slopes down to the river. These are some photographs that were provided that provide some context. Um, the starting on the upper left are Queens Point um, uh, complex or uh, development there. And then uh, next to the Queens Point one is the property, the house immediately next to the vacant lot. Uh, this is the subject of the uh, project. And then on the right behind the red truck is the next adjacent house, um, a contributing structure. Um, and then so across the street is the light blue colored house um, and 
the side of that light blue colored house. And then um, beyond, behind that one is, uh, behind the light blue colored house is a vacant space. Uh, and this house in the middle now is next to that vacant space. On the right are two homes that are um, uh, also on the same side of the same block as the um, proposed house. And then I'm going to continue again. So here again is the vacant uh, property. And I believe this is the vacant property from the river, river side, uh, from the <coughs> river end of the lot looking back towards East Front Street. Uh, and then these, these two uh, photos are the same house um, farther down uh, East Front Street, closer to down, downtown, and I believe may be referenced by the applicant's uh, architect. Um, this is the site plan, essentially, for the new house. <coughs> and uh, the East Front Street on the left, the sidewalk, and then the house. Um, you can see it includes uh, also this garage in the bottom center of the image. And then the rest of the property uh, to the right is to be left undeveloped. Um, there is a section of wetlands in there. And then the river is on the right hand side. Um, to, uh, I guess, um, so there is a house on the uh, 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 property adjacent top uh, here, or to the left of the house, and then more to the north of the house, and to the south there is also another uh, structure as well. Um, we'll see those in another image right here in fact. Um, so the, this <coughs> places the, uh, the house uh, and garage in context with the surrounding houses. And this is to provide uh, the uh, relevant information for the setback requirement. And we can come back to this if we need to. Then uh, this is the first floor plan. Let me make it a little bit smaller. Okay. Uh, and uh, we'll see, for example, um, on the left, we have along the sidewalk uh, a brick wall, a brick retaining wall, uh, and then there is the entry stairs are uh, accessed from the driveway, and then a small set of stairs that end up going up to the uh, entryway. But this now is essentially the basement plan, and uh, it is a large open space because of the uh, flood requirements. Uh, so people would park in the garage or park in the driveway and then uh, walk in through this one door here or walk in their front door, uh, but walk in the door potentially in the back through the large open space and into basically the elevator lobby to access the elevator. And there's also stairs to go up from there as well. Uh, the, on the right hand side we have a low retaining wall as well uh, for the backyard, which the backyard would then um, be this large white area here as well. What we also see in the plan is a paved uh, patio area um, uh, towards the back of this open basement area. So the main floor, uh, where the main entrance is on the left, uh, there is a covered porch there, uh, and we'll see that in a second. And then out the back, there are also uh, an uncovered porch and a screened-in porch. Um, well, I'm sorry, the, there is a porch which is both un has an uncovered portion at the back uh, towards the rear and a covered portion uh, in closer towards the house. And then there is a, another area that is actually a screened-in porch. <coughs> uh, and then the uh, garage also has a second floor area uh, with uh, bathroom and uh, finished room as well. 
and a deck out the back. So then the next floor, the second floor, um, just has uh, the usual bedrooms and bathrooms and such. Uh, no, uh, no balconies, no uh, porches on that floor. So, so now we can go much smaller. Um, okay, this is an elevation of the front of the house. Uh, and so the, uh, the brick retaining wall along the sidewalk is shown here as three feet high as it uh, continues across the front of the house and then around the side and then around to the back. Uh, and now you can see the stairway coming up from the driveway area up to the front covered porch. Uh, and uh, the second floor is um, what you might call a half store. Uh, an extra half story. It's a full story, but uh, uses um, the gables and uh, to uh, maintain a lower roof profile. Uh, and uh, in the background here is the front of the garage, which now over here is rendered. <coughs> so they're not building two, but this is just the uh, more detailed rendering of the garage. So you get the full garage. <coughs> Uh, since it's kind of tucked back behind the house a little bit. Uh, all right. Then the next drawing shows the, uh, that would be the south side of the house. And also to note is they have indicated the, um, the first floor level, uh, which is uh, 12 feet, 13 feet above sea level. And so in this, uh, in this area, that is the required floor height. Uh, and um, other things to point out, in the, on the foundation level or the basement level, we're talking about painted louvers with the brick <coughs> side, with the brick um, material on this, as the exterior material. Uh, and, and then uh, hardy board lap siding is typical around the building. Uh, vinyl windows with 3D grills inside and out. Um, and we have all the corner boards and the large boards and such are all shown here. Uh, roof overhangs and slopes. Um, brackets at the, uh, at the peaks. Um, the uh, columns out front, composite columns. And we see here on the right is that screened-in porch above the patio, covered patio area that I mentioned earlier. Um, the steps on this, in this case, are brick masonry. And that's it for that. Let's see the outline of the uh, of the garage here with its deck, and that is shown here. That's all hardy board siding, and the, uh, uh, the deck is on the stilts here. Um, what I've been cutting off here all the time is the roofing is a standing seam metal roof. All the same materials I mentioned before, just to point out the features. On the left is the uh, screened-in porch. This is the then the porch area that is both covered and uncovered. Uh, and now you can see some of the other dormers and the gable here on this one section here. And the uh, retaining wall as it's coming around to the back of the house is taller than it was out front uh, due to the sloping uh, ground. Then finally, the uh, northern elevation is here, and you can see also the, um, the garage on the left, and on the hand to the right, pick up more of the facade. And, oh, sorry, and then this is the elevation of the garage on that side. 
Uh, there must have been an elevation for the backside. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. that. Yes, here it is. The backside of the garage is shown here. So um, with metal garage doors where um, indeed uh, cars would be parked back there, uh, but then the uh, rest of the uh, structure is above the, uh, the floor level. Zoning and inspection review. Uh, we have um, the zoning uh, administrator has said that it does meet the requirements of land use ordinance and the setbacks must comply with city code section 15-416. Uh, the chief building inspector says, of course, it will require a building permit. And then we're ready with our recommendations. Okay. Sarah, anything to add? No. Okay. Anyone who is opponent or proponent of the project? No. Uh, ready for your uh, recommendations and findings? Okay. okay. So this is a project for uh, Joanne Lang and Go Architectural Design PLLC at 720 East Front Street. Uh, <coughs> Obviously, there's a no historic property name, and it is a big parcel, so none of the others are relevant. Uh, so this is for the project at 720 East Front Street to include construction of a new two-story infill house and two-story detached garage. Uh, staff submits the following historic district guidelines are appropriate to this application. For development pattern 2.1.1, 2, and 3, for utilities, 2.3.1, 2, 3, and 6. For landscaping, 2.4.3, 4, and 7. <coughs> for fences and garden walls, 2.5.1 and 2. For accessory structures, 2.6.1 and 2. For parking, 2.7.1 and 2. For waterfront modifications, 2.9.3. For design principles, 2.3.1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. For infill construction, 3.4.1, 2, 3, and 4. For foundations, 4.1.2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. For walls, trim, and ornamentation, 4.2.4 and 5. For windows, doors, and openings, 4.3.2 and 3. For entrances, 4.4.4. For roofs, 4.5.4 and 6. For decks and patios, 4.6.2. For masonry, 5.1.3, 5, and 6. For metals, 5.3.3 and 4. For paint, 5.4.2, 4, and 6. For contemporary materials, 5.5.1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. Statements are reason based on the information contained in the application and staff's judgment are, one, the project is located in the tight weave development pattern. Two, the proposal is an infill and accessory structure project. Three, proposed design components and materials meet the requirements of the guidelines. Four, the zoning administrator and chief building official have reviewed this project and commented accordingly. And five, the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. So staff recommends the commission approve this application to include construction of a two-story infill house and two-story detached garage with the following condition. The seaway is not valid and construction may not begin until the applicant provides the HPA the drawings, details, and description of the utilities, exterior lighting, and landscaping for this project, and the HPA has reviewed the information and approves by issuing an amended COA or as a separate COA the installation of said utilities, lighting, and landscaping. That's the end of our recommendation. Okay. Questions, comments, and board? Mr. Chairman, um, would it be worthwhile to work through the COA evaluation worksheet just as a way to guide? questions and discussions. There's a lot, a lot of bits and pieces to this. We, we, we've never done that. Okay. I, are there questions? Do you have questions? You know what you know what's on the sheet. Do you have questions from it? Well it's it's intended to be a way just to kind of guide questions yeah. and comments. Yeah. Vice Chair Yor has mm -hmm. 
put this together to guide us. I'll let the commissioners decide whether this would help us move through this a little bit quicker. I, I don't need to do that, but okay. yeah. somebody wants to. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody is interested and wants it. Yeah. 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 Any questions, observations, comments? Can I just ask a question? Question. Uh, vinyl windows are allowed in new construction? I'm sorry? Vinyl windows are allowed in new construction in the infill? Uh, yeah. In, yes. In limited applications. Yeah. Uh, and so the, uh, as you can imagine, the only vinyl taboo would be side, siding, mm -hmm. right? But uh, we see it a lot on window fenestration these days as well as um, some uh, eaves and soffits, maybe. Other questions, concerns? Yeah. Extremely thorough, thank you. Mm -hmm. Every question I had was answered by looking at the drawings, so thanks. Would someone care to make a motion based on that, rec uh, that record setting number of, <coughs> of uh, guidelines? Yeah, I'll, I'll move that. Uh, we find the application for 720 East Front Street uh, for a certificate of appropriateness uh, that is not incongruous with New Bern's Code of Ordinance, sections 15.411 to 15.429, and New Bern's uh, Historic District Standards, as they will soon become, uh, based on the following guidelines and uh, findings of fact. Development pattern 2.11, 2.12, and 3. Uh, utilities 2.31, 2, 3, and 6. Landscaping 2.43, 2.44, 2.47. .4, Fences and garden walls 2.51 and 2. Accessory structures 2.6.1 and 2. Parking, 2.7.1 and 2. Uh, waterfront modifications, 2.93. Design principles, 3.1.1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Infill construction, 3.4.1, 2, 3, and 4. Foundations, 4.1.2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Walls, trim, and ornamentation, 4.2.4 and 5. Windows, doors, and openings, 4.3.2 and 3. Entrances, 4.4.4. Roofs, 4.5.4 and 4.5.6. Decks and patios, 4.6.2. Masonry, 5.1.3, 5.1.5 and 6. Metals 5.3.3, 5.3.4. Paint 5.4.234 and 6. Contemporary materials 5.5.1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. Uh, findings of fact the project is located in the tight weave development pattern. Uh, uh, it consists of uh, infill construction and an accessory structure. The proposed design components and materials um, meet the standards. The zoning <coughs> administrator and building official have uh, reviewed the project and commented accordingly. And lastly, the project is not incongruous with the guidelines. Uh, the condition being that um, uh, information pertaining to utilities, exterior lighting, and landscaping come back as a separate COA. So second? Second. Moved and seconded. We approve this uh, project. All in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. We will, we do motion to issue a COA? Yeah. With, with that uh, condition? Yes, sir. Uh, to issue with the condition. Yeah. Okay. Motion to approve the COA with the condition stated. So moved. moved. Second. All in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? 
GOA with conditions is issued. I assume we still don't have 305 so, North. Can, can okay. somebody help me with our next meeting date for a hearing? What? Oh, we need to do a continuance. Continuance. Continuance for 305 North Avenue. What, what, when is our next hearing date? Oh, uh, February 15th. February 15th. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that mm -hmm. we continue the application for 302. 305. Sorry. Yeah, 305. North Avenue. The 305s are killing me tonight. Uh, <laughs> North Avenue uh, until our next regularly uh, scheduled hearing, which will occur on uh, February 15th, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. here in uh, the City Hall courtroom. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Move and seconded. We continue 305 North Avenue. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Done deal. Okay, uh, thank you for helping me keep that address straight. Mm -hmm. uh, old business, none. Any public comments? No. Uh, new business, none. Anything significant in your report that you would like to tell us about? Um, in the, uh, the report of uh, the COAs? Your administrator's report. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no. No? Okay. Uh, Commissioner reg resignations and replacement, I guess we would discuss that. Annette, if everybody knows by now, Annette re resigned and we have two new gentlemen to, will be, have been sworn in, both of you, and we'll get the training, which Tim has volunteered to do, and come to the next design review and we'll be fully engaged at the next meeting. Thank you. Uh, Anything else we need to discuss? So I have also on the agenda is the annual report to the State Historic Preservation Office. Mm -hmm. um, we did uh, submit that report on time uh, back in November or December. Okay. And they loved it? No, they didn't say anything. Okay. <laughs> but it was included in, in your packet. I oh, wait, actually. Uh, I never I seen that. Oh yes, so it's uh, shown here real briefly um, some uh, interesting uh, questions and uh, answers. Uh, mm -hmm. So you, if you have interest or uh, you're curious, uh, you can take a look at that. Um, we also have to submit subsequent or uh, as follow-up to this, uh, the report regarding uh, demolitions in all of our historic districts. Oh, and also the uh, resumes for uh, the new appointments uh, prior to November. So not you two guys yet, but next year we'll need by, by November we'll need to have some kind of resume from you guys as to we're just uh, listing on a piece of paper what your qualifications or your experience has been that makes makes it uh, um, makes you qualified. By next that. time. By, by next November. By next November? Yeah. Well, that gives a little, little time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, I don't know if you'd also want to, um, maybe uh, at, the, at the design review meeting, we get to uh, get it to meet our new members. Yes. We expect a full bio and... No, right. <laughs> at the next yeah, right. design review. Okay. Any comments from the commissioners? Well, Matt, where was this document that you're showing? I, I don't see it in the, the roll-up HBC documents or meetings. Could you email it to us? We, we sure, don't, sure, never got sure. that. Uh, um, okay. Yes, oh, just, it's now also it? on It's this whole 137-page uh, document uh, that we use tonight is also on the website uh, under oh, the... Okay. I'll just go there. Yes. Okay, thanks. So, the and this is starting on page uh, like 130 or something. <laughs> I can skip the first part. Yes. <laughs> okay, we entertain a motion to adjourn. Yes. Second. Move and second, we adjourn. All in favor state aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.